Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the type of questions where they don't give you any numbers but instead they give you letters. Now a lot of students find this section quite confusing but what I'm going to show you in this lesson is that there is a pattern that you can follow when solving these types of questions. So what you've got to do is you've got to look at the question first of all. So the question wants us to eventually find the sin of angle X. Okay, now X is over here in this bottom triangle. So what you're typically going to do is don't work in that triangle just yet. You're going to work in the other triangle. So you're going to work in the top triangle first. Which side do you think we should find? Well, we eventually want to end up working in the bottom triangle. So what we're going to do is start off in the top triangle and we're going to try to find the line BC because BC is a part of both triangles. So that is the goal for the next few minutes. Let us try and find BC by using the top triangle. So this is where you use your sin rule or cos rule. And remember that if they show you this angle theta, for example, or alpha, that means that you can use that angle. Remember this whole section is about using letters instead of numbers. So that means you have the, those angles and you also have this side over here. So remember we should always try to use the sin rule first as it's the easiest one to use between the sin and cos rule. So what we can do is we can see that side BC, well that's opposite angle A and then we have R which is opposite angle alpha. But now some students might say, but Kevin, we don't have angle A. Okay, you are right at the moment we don't, but we do have angle B and we have angle C. So just using 180 minus those two, that'll give us angle A. So we can say that angle A is going to be equal to 180 minus theta minus alpha. Okay, that's just because of the sum of angles in a triangle. So now we can use the sin rule. So we can say that BC over the sin of its angle, which is the 180 minus theta minus alpha, is going to be equal to R over the sin of angle alpha. Okay, so you know where I'm getting that from. That's just using the normal sin rule. A over sin A is equal to B over sin B. Okay, so that looks good. Now the goal of the question is to get, is to get BC by itself. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part over here and I'm just going to multiply it up to the top over there. And so BC is going to be equal to R times by the sin of 180 minus theta minus alpha. And then all of that is going to be over sin alpha. What I want to quickly do now is just look at this section over here, this 180 minus theta minus alpha, because we can see that that's not part of the answer. They have it in a slightly different way, and many times they are going to do that in exams. Let me show you what they're doing there. So if we look at sin of 180 minus theta minus alpha, now pay careful attention here because once you understand this part, then it's quite easy. Because up till, up till now, I'm sure this part has been a bit confusing. A lot of students get confused here. So what you want to do is take out a common factor within this bracket. So we're going to take out a common factor from that section over there. And what we're going to take out is a negative. We're then going to open up another bracket. And what we'll be left with is theta plus alpha. Let me show you if that, let me, let's see if that makes sense. If we had to put the minus back into that bracket, that would give us minus alpha, I mean minus theta, which is what we had, and it would give us minus alpha, which is also what we had over here. So those two expressions, the top one and the bottom one, they are mathematically the same, they just look different. Now we know from another part of trigonometry, specifically the cast diagram, that if you have the sin of 180 minus x, if you had to reduce that, then that just becomes sin x. Okay, so that works for everything. So if we have a, a sin of 180 minus a smiley face, well, that's it, a smiley face, then that just becomes the sin of the smiley face. If we have the sin of 180 minus z, then that just becomes the sin of z. If we have the sin of 180 minus, and then in brackets, a plus b plus c, then that just becomes the sin of a plus b plus c. You see, so it becomes the sin of whatever's over here. So with that being said, then this part here that I've got at the bottom left, well, that's just going to end up becoming sin of theta plus alpha. So we're going to transform this part over here 
into the sin of theta plus alpha. And there I've done that over there. Okay, so we've got BC. Now what we do is we work in the bottom triangle. But remember now, we do have side BC. Our end goal is to find the sin of x. So we can try the sin rule again because we've got k opposite sin x and then we've got beta opposite BC. So we could say that the sin of x over its opposite side, which is k, equals to the sin of beta over BC. Now I'll just call it BC for now. Now we're trying to get sin x by itself, so let's do that. The way I'll do that is I'll multiply this k up to the top. So that's going to give you k sin beta over BC. Notice I'm calling it BC for as long as I can because I don't want to have to write all this stuff down the whole time. Now that Okay, but now we are at a position where we'll have to fill in what BC is. So we've got k sin beta at the top. And then BC is going to be equal to R times by the sin of theta plus alpha. And then that's going to be over sin alpha. And then I'm just going to make this line a little bit longer because that's our main divide line. How do we now handle, well, how do we handle this now? So we've got a fraction on top of another fraction. Why do I say that the top part is a fraction? Well, I'm just going to write over here. We can think of k sin beta as k sin beta over 1. And then that's all over r times by the sin of theta plus alpha over sin alpha. Now remember, when you have a fraction on top of a fraction, then what you need to do is you do that little trick that we would have done many years ago in, in lower grades. You would leave the top part the same, so that's the 1 over 3. Then you say times, and you flip this part upside down to become 4 over 2. So doing that over here, we're going to end up with sin x equals to k times the sin of beta over 1 times by the flipped over form of the bottom fraction. So that's going to be sin alpha over r times the sin of theta or alpha plus theta. It doesn't matter. I've switched the order there, but that's okay. When you're plusing, the order doesn't matter. And there we are pretty much at the answer. We can just multiply the top part together now. So that's just going to give us that over there. And then at the bottom, we're simply left with r times by the sin of alpha plus theta.